in Factorio, you play as 19th century industrialist John D. Rockefeller, who is exiled from Earth for crimes against the environment. You crash land on a pristine planet and proceed to drain the natural resources, burn down the forests, and drive your tank through the ramshackle villages of the native population. Your goal is to build a rocket to take you back to Earth, where you can continue to feed children into the machinery of your textile factories. In order to build that rocket though, you're going to have to take the raw materials that Mother Nature provides and process them into useful things, like electronic circuits or nuclear weapons. Your first step will be to mine some coal and iron with your bare hands, just like the child slaves you kept back on Earth used to do. But you're better than that. So why not treat yourself to a miner and a smelter? Boom. Now you're automatically getting a supply of iron plates and all you have to do is insert some coal every once in a while. But fuck that. Manually inserting coal into every single machine is for pussies. You want to be able to just sit back and relax. So build yourself some electric miners, some belts and some boilers. Now you have power. And now you can own this planet. The average session of Factorio goes a bit like this. You see something cool you want in the research window, so you try and make the science packs required for that research. You think the research is going a bit slow though, so you scale production of your science packs. But this results in a shortage of the blue circuits needed to make the science packs, so you scale blue circuit production. But scaling up blue circuits results in a shortage of green circuits, so you have to scale that up too. But now your iron smelting can't keep up with the new level of green circuit production, so you have to scale that up too. Now you don't have enough iron ore. Anyway, five hours later you still haven't researched that thing you wanted, but now you've redesigned your entire train network and concreted over your entire base. Everything interacts with everything else in such a complex way that it's basically impossible to make like a 100% efficient base. There's always going to be a bottleneck somewhere and a lot of the fun in this game is finding these problems and just trying to fix them. I like to think that Factorio is a bit like golf. The aim of the game is just to play as little of it as possible. Automation is key and the sooner you can transition away from handcrafting things like a peasant, the better. Automation is your life now. Factorio is your life now. Before you can get all that sweet stuff though, you're going to have to buckle down and do some scientific research. Usually this would involve years in university and thousands of pounds of student loans, you know, do a couple of PhDs. But in Factorio, you just throw together a lab, put some suspicious chemicals in a test tube and mix that shit together. There we go, now you have the secrets of nuclear fusion. If I can do that in like 10 minutes, then what on earth took you so long, Oppenheimer, you lazy fucker. One thing you'll discover quite quickly is that you're not alone on this planet. From the second you land, you might notice some scurrying around the outskirts of your base. This is the native population, and they are not happy with your arrival. Unfortunately, there's no disease mechanic in Factorio, so you won't be able to Hernan Cortez your way out of this. You're going to have to roll up your sleeves and do it yourself. In order to achieve this, you have a literal arsenal at your disposal. You'll start out with a pistol, which would just barely be enough to fend off the first few biter attacks. By the end of the game, however, you'll be running around in power armor with a flamethrower just wrecking anything that stands in your way. You aren't the only one that gets stronger as the game goes on though. As your factory gets bigger, the amount of pollution it produces increases dramatically. As you create your own personal Chernobyl, the locals will mutate and evolve to become deadlier and much more numerous. You can reduce this pollution by powering your base with solar panels and adding efficiency modules to your machines. Or, you can just do what I did. Add more coal burning steam boilers, transition to nuclear power, and go bug hunting with your trusty tank. If you have a mining outpost set up and you want to get that iron ore back to your base, the best thing to do is just build some tracks, stick some rocket fuel on the train, and let that bad boy do its job. Theoretically, trains are the easiest and most efficient method of transporting things over long distances. Theoretically. If anyone actually knows how trains work, please email me at bigherk at hotmail.com. Don't forget to include your name and address, and remember to tell me you're going to bust my cheeks. Don't worry, I'll know what that means. No, but seriously, I've put about 200 hours into this game, and my train network still looks like this. Some YouTubers can make really complex train networks with the hundreds of trains carrying every resource to the far corners of their base. Meanwhile, my iron supply keeps getting interrupted because one of my goddamn iron trains decides it's a good idea to sit right in the middle of this really important intersection for no reason at all! What the fuck are you doing, you piece of shit? <sighs> I 
Sorry about that. Um, an another important thing about trains is... Eventually, you'll get robots, and that's where the real fun begins. There are two main types of bots you can build, logistics bots and construction bots. There are also some combat ones, but I don't know, I don't really use them. Logistics robots are a great way to transport lots of stuff across your base without having to build loads of bots, which would just be a headache to try and control. But the bots really need a logistics network to be most effective. A logistics network is made up of logistics chests, roboports, and of course, the bots themselves. If your network's connected properly, then everything within that network will become available for everything else to use. For example, if I have an assembly machine that needs a certain item, but that item's being made on the other side of my base, I could try and PUSCAT ME! my way up there with belts, but that'll just be a complete mess. Instead, I can just set up a provider chest in the output of this machine, and a requester chest in the output of that machine, and just let my boys do the work. Logistic spots are also perfect for managing your inventory. Are you tired of individually clicking on each individual chest to get the things you want? Fuck that. Just tell your robots that you want a certain amount of each item to always be in your inventory and relax while they personally hand deliver it like you're a Roman emperor just being fed grapes. On the other hand, if you have some trash in your inventory that you want to get rid of, just set it to auto trash that item and you will never have to carry around that copper ore filth again. Construction robots are absolutely amazing. Once you unlock these bad boys, the expansion of your base just becomes exponential. You can keep some on you at all times with a personal robo port, and anytime you crash a car into a tree or it gets damaged from a better attack, you can send a brave bot out to repair it. And then just drive off and leave him to his fate, it's pretty funny. They are far more useful however, for construction and deconstruction, using some beautiful things called blueprints. Blueprints are essentially a way for you to save designs for future use. If you have a creation that you're proud of, then you can just select off a blueprint, save it and then plop it down later, and force your child slaves to further expand your abomination of a factory, you terrible person. Another great feature of blueprints is the ability to copy and paste its string and share it online at places like factorioprints.com. My personal tip is to use your green circuit blueprints as currency in exchange for nudes. It is absolutely guaranteed to work 100% of the time. If it's your first time playing, I'd recommend trying to make your own abominations. A lot of the fun in this game is just trying to figure out how things work and fixing your own stupid mistakes. But if you're lazy or just really shit, then you can roleplay as a Chinese diplomat and download blueprints online while claiming them as your own. Thankfully, there are no words in Mandarin for copyright infringement. All the music you've heard in this video is from the game, and it's all absolutely beautiful. It's just such a great atmosphere this game, with the combination of the music, the ambient sounds of your inserters and machines just working away, and the pixel art-like graphics. They all work together to create a sort of relaxing atmosphere that is really just unlike any other game I've played. While the graphics aren't the most technically detailed in the world, they do have their own charm and also mean the game is able to run on a calculator. Seriously, I played this game while I was home for Christmas using my laptop which struggles to run YouTube sometimes and I didn't really have any problems until I got to like the really late game. I think the best way to play this game is just turn down the lights, stick on a good podcast or audiobook and start building your factory. The next time you look away from your monitor, a week will have passed, your partner will have left you, your pets will have run away, but you don't need them anymore. You have Factorio now. For time, atomic penetration, rapid fire through your skull. Oh. Shot it on when taking it back to the days of trying to lose control. The Factorio community are all completely autistic, and I honestly love them for that. Go on to any Factorio Let's Play and scroll down to the comments. You're sure to see at least one comment telling the uploader how shit their factory is and how they did everything wrong. Actually, wait. Pause this video, go down to the comments, you're sure to see at least one comment telling me how shit my factory is and how I did everything wrong. The game also has some great mods. For the love of god, I am on my hands and knees right now just begging you, please, please install the long reach mod. Unless you like hearing this noise, anytime you try to do anything, it's just slightly out of reach of your character's baby arms. 
There are also a number of other quality of life mods, which make things a little bit less tedious, such as Squeak 3 and Resource Spawner Overhaul. It's really up to you how far a mod goes before you think it's cheating. All in all, the mods for this game are great. I give them a 9 out of 10. I think all they need to do now is port over Lover's Lab and then it'll be absolutely perfect. When I first saw Factorio, I admit I was pretty sceptical. I didn't think it would actually be a game that I'd enjoy, but it really is the most addictive game that I've ever played. It's the kind of thing where it's like easy to learn but hard to master. On the surface, it doesn't look that complex, but once you jump in, you realise how many different systems and just different ways to play there are. Factorio will kick your ass, and you will enjoy every single minute of it. Thanks for watching and thank you very much for 1000 subscribers, like it's crazy, the last video just blew up, I literally made it in like a day, I didn't really expect it to go anywhere, but if you're new from that video then welcome to my channel and uh, read the pinned comment, uh, I'm just really, not really sure what direction I want to take this channel in, so if you could reply to that, that would be great, and if you like this video, give it a like, if you dislike the video, just give it a like anyway and subscribe. Alright, cheers. See you never.